Welcome back to our next episode of our podcast. We're starting a new series today, and this is something that Bishop and I are very committed to and very fond of. Yes. We want to talk about taking a stand for what you believe. And I'm curious, are you willing to take a stand for what you believe? Because so many people are not. So many people, in our observation, are sitting on the sidelines, you know, in the silent majority. And so many people, in fact, maybe the majority doesn't follow the truth. They follow the majority. No. <laughs> yeah. Say it ain't so. It, it, it is so, though. <laughs> and here's the problem with that. If you follow the crowd, you most often get absolutely lost in it. Yes. Those who tell the truth. Now, it's dangerous to tell the truth in today's society, Bersabo. Yes, you can get thrown in prison for it. That's right. You know, at best <laughs> case, best case scenario, you can get persecuted. Worst case, you can get prosecuted. Now, I guess that's not probably new in our world. If you look back at the great philosophers, without very many, if any, exceptions like Socrates or Plato or Seneca or Buddha or Christ, they were persecuted. Many of them were prosecuted, and some of them even gave their lives. Maybe it's just a little bit more pre prevalent in today's world because of social media and the, the broad availability that we have to access a lot of different things that aren't necessarily covered in the mainstream. You see, the behaviors we observe in spades around us today are not new, not necessarily. They're just more obvious and upfront than they've been in the past. Sure. But here's, here's one of the things that we can observe in today's secular world. Is it okay to lie, Bersabu? Yes. Yes. In today's world, it's okay to lie. Why, why would you say that? Well, look around. Okay. I mean, look at the uh, media. Look at... What's happening in our elections here in the United States, supposedly the land of the free. Look, um, look at look at how many people have lied under oath mm. and it's no longer a crime, I guess, because it maybe it's considered virtuous or at least it's a, considered OK in some twisted way. Let me give you an example. It's glaringly obvious that Anthony Fauci lied under oath. Yes. Numerous times. Mm -hmm. In fact, pay attention. He's changed his story so many times, he has a hard time keeping it straight. Yeah. You know, nothing has happened to him, Not even yet. though he lied under oath. You know, nothing has happened to him. Well, we know where he's going. <laughs> Where's he going? After he dies. <laughs> <laughs> he's already living there. Yeah, he's going straight to hell. <laughs> yeah. He now admits, though, he now admits listen to us, that social distancing and masking for COVID was made up with no scientific evidence to support it. He admits this now. Now, I'm sure you heard him at least more than once say it was absolutely necessary and it was vital to, to stop the spread. Mm -hmm. It wasn't true. Nope. Hunter Biden and his family and his father, Joe, you heard of them, have lied more times than can be counted under oath and otherwise Joe hasn't lied under oath but Hunter has and and yet nothing has happened to them Adam Schiff in Congress if you're familiar stated many many times he had quote hard evidence of Donald Trump's collusion with Russia it finally came out that he had none and, there, and there's so many more you know while people like Julian Assange have been ostracized for releasing truth that was uncomfortable and incriminating to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson. What happened to Tucker Carlson? Tucker Carlson got fired. He lost his job. Why did he get fired? Well, it's never been told directly, but you no. can kind of figure it out. He was the most viewed host on Fox for speaking the truth, but he got fired. So what sense does that make? Well, it makes a lot of sense if the truth is not popular. So in this series, what we're going to discuss is you having the courage to stand for what you believe in. Now, if you're going to take a stand for what you believe in, you must know specifically what you do believe in. And I know that makes sense to you. 
Now, while this may seem simplistic, we can assure you it's not. In fact, most people don't think. Most people think they think, True. but they don't really think. You know, there's a lot of concern about AI, and rightfully so, but the reality is most humans are AI. They're artificial intelligence because the things they're, they think they believe in are things that have been handed to them and conditioned into them from outside influences, outside influences such as what? Like your parents, Parent. clergy, government, schools. Right, school systems, peer group, mm -hmm. as well as the insidious and subtle programming of your genetics. Oh, <laughs> for those of us that are Middle Eastern, whoa. It you goes go back a long, long, long ways. ways. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been programmed into what is right and wrong, true and false. Now, depending upon the strength and awareness of your nuclear family unit, or the lack of strength and awareness, as well as their degree of awareness and willingness to question, you most likely just accept the things from an outside source at a very early age. Mm -hmm. And then very few, if any, ever take the time to question this as they move into adulthood. You know, how often do you step back and ask yourself questions like, why do I think what I think? Why do I value what I value? If you really dig deep, when you dig deep, you'll realize that the things that you think to be true and the things that you value utmost in life are things that have been handed to you. They're not your own unique ideas. You know, Socrates stated once, I measure the quality of the questions I ask, not by the ones to which I have an answer, but I measure the quality of the questions I ask by the ones to which I have no answer. Mm. Pretty profound. So let us ask you, are you willing to consider your current, quote, truth as completely erroneous and wrong? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to question everything you've been told and taught? Now, the reality is, when you do this, you might come back to the same thing, but the difference is, now it's not something you've been handed, it's sure. something that you own for yourself. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. If you are willing to question everything you've been told and taught, and everything you consider to be, quote, truth, then congratulations, because the reality is, many are not, maybe even most. And many, if not most, don't care enough about the truth to take the time to do the questioning. They're too busy with secular life, money, food, sex, power, which are all conditioning, by the mm -hmm. way. And so in this series, we want to give you some insights and tools for beginning to question and to begin a genuine search for truth. Yes. There's only one truth. Truth is timeless and truth is cross-contextual. So stay tuned. It's not easy to do this. It's not supposed to be easy. Because great and easy cannot coexist in the same space, but it's well worth it, and your life will thank you for it. Hopefully this has been valuable for you. God bless you. Lots thank of you love. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you next Bye. week.